What is up, everybody? So we are here. One moment. Uh, we can leave that on. I don't think that'll copyright us. But we are here with some stranded alien dawn. Now this is, it caught my eye because I got big old RimWorld vibes from it, right? But uh, we are going to check it out and uh, see how it is. I played a little bit of the tutorial just to kind of get a, an understanding and a feel of what we will be running into here. And while I didn't run into the combat type stuff, we got some different scenarios. Outcast by one-way ticket to uncharted territories of the outer worlds where they plan to set up a small trading post. Up to three passengers land on the planet with all their money that they had. This is the story of their enterprise. Their mission is acquire enough galacta coins to buy the planet. Crash landing. Survival. Find a way back to civilization on that one. And then you have the military outpost. A team of adventurous scientists and soldiers. Soldiers. Bleh. Words. To a heavily infested planet where they must construct and defend a core communication relay which will enable interstellar communication in the sector. Up to six team members are dropped on the unexplored world far from the civilized galaxy. This is the story of their struggle. So we're going to do crash landing here. Uh, the region is going to be random. The moon. That's interesting. So is the moon the difficulty level? Yeah, so this is essentially the moon here, is essentially the, uh... What was it? The Storytellers from RimWorld. Uh, so we'll leave that on Concordia for now, because, you know, scary, scary. Uh, for this, we are just gonna do... <laughs> we'll do Bing Bong. Game rules increases the average numbers of survivors you can find by two. Eternal bliss disables aggressive animal attacks. No. Lost cause. Overqualified. All right, we're gonna leave all those off. We'll leave that. And then, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So, here are our four survivors. I like the little, uh, facial recognition things we got here. Not facial recognition, but just the different character art that we have going on. That's pretty neat. So, we've got a corporate spy. Pretty smart. Uh, then they've got different relationships. You know, really... A more in-depth background, but really getting the, uh... The vibe that it's rimrolled with, you know, a different set of graphics. So I want Jack. There we go. Let's throw Jack on there. I want somebody who's somewhat decent at combat and construction. And I think we've got a pretty well-rounded team here. And uh, we'll get right into it and we'll see how it goes. So here we are. Ship's going down. Looks like we're having thruster problems. like we got the desert world start right all right so let's take a look at our surroundings here so we got a couple of uh zebra-esque camels here but they have some interesting blue stripes we've got whatever that is maybe some water or some sort over there Everybody's cold. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna work on 
scavenging our landing pod. One of those that's get observed. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we are going to take our audio, turn our ambiance down a little bit, because the wind blowing is a little, a little loud. Simon's crying. Simon is having a horrible time. Who is Simon? Simon is our corporate spy. Uh, looks like he's got some health conditions going on. He inhaled, inhaled some smoke. So he's have he's had better times. He's, that's going to be our hint system. It's going to give us some helps. Simon was having a meltdown. He's a little bit more chill now. Oh, we have a laser pistol. Where's Jack at? Hey, Jack, do me a favor. Go ahead and equip that. Some first aid kits going on there. We got a rail gun. Hey, Jack, actually, do me a favor, equip that. So that's good. We got some medical supplies out of there. We got a little bit of food. So what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on getting some of these shelters up, right? And I want to do, we've got a good defensive line here for the most part. I think what we'll do is we'll actually end up making this a uh, a little hold here. Because we do have a decent amount of uh, things that we can scavenge, it looks like. Let's do a little twirl of our map here. Everything's looking pretty calm. We've got some different fauna and uh, flora roaming around. We've got some of the more of those uh, slug-like, beetle-like. What is that? They got six legs. Then it looks like we're not the first ship to crash here, so there's that. But we'll go ahead and start getting uh, some of these shelters built up here. Fine, Simon, do whatever you want to do. Uh, we do need to collect some trees, so we are going to go ahead and do that for some wood. We found uh, Juice Leaf. Uh, I want our scientist personnel to uh, go ahead and observe the palm trees. Kind of get a name for all the flora and fauna that's around, you know. Uh, let's get some... Where is it? Some sleeping spots for our people here. Hmm, I might have messed up that spacing a bit, eh? That's alright. And then with that, we've got a, uh, a good amount of sleeping spots set up for all of our people. We are working on scavenging the good old landing pad over here. And uh, we are going to go ahead and try and get them some different things set up here. Now I wonder if I can just... So I want this to go out one more, and then we'll build this way, and then we'll have like a little U-shape there. We've got some body armor, it looks like, possibly. And then I want to get these observed here, because I'm interested in what these pods are. Could be an easy food source for us. Let's see here. We need to get a campfire going. 
Uh, we need more sticks. So maybe these palm bushes are going to be good for sticks for us. We'll see. Where's our scientist at? Our scientist is making pretty good time on the uh, palm bushes and palm trees and things. We have a synthetic vest. Jack, we are going to have Jack come over here and equip that synthetic vest. And then I think what we'll do is we'll work on getting some, uh, some warmer clothing, hopefully. Well, we have, uh, some pretty nasty hypothermia setting in here. Once they get that fire going, hopefully that should, uh, fix that up for me. Alright, so let's get some chairs built, some wooden ones. Now, the only thing I don't like so far is that it is canceling out the, uh, the build every time you play something, but what you can do is you can come in here and you can copy all of that just to make it a little bit easier on yourself. some synthetic textiles all right so let's take a look here right orders we can order them to attack hunt butcher small drying rack let's get that put up because over time, that's only going to help us out here. We'll set that up right out front there. Get some torches out. Copy that over there. That should give us some good lighting. Now, Simon, for some reason, is the happiest man alive. Something that we do need to do is uh, get up a, tr or a research desk, rather. We'll do wood. We put together a camp as quick as we could, considering the circumstances we are not sleeping in the dirt, we have a roof over our heads and a fire to eliminate the dark, uncertain nights. And the most important, we have survived. To us, this feels like an achievement worth honoring. We can gather around the campfire and celebrate being alive at 1900 tonight. A great idea. Let's do it. Nothing improves morale than a small celebration. So, at 1900, we are going to, uh... Have a little get together. How are we looking on food? We got 10 food left. Uh, we're still over here salvaging it. Looks like we got another railgun sniper rifle. Uh, so I want to see their skills. Health. It looks like you got a full uh, cirrhosis. Oh, he's got. Ooh. That's not good. Combat instructor, where can you see their skills at? Help, schedule, activities, tamed animals, research. There it is, right there in front of my face. Excellent. Alright, so the only two that aren't armed are Emelyn and Krista. Emelyn has some combat experience, so we are going to go ahead and arm Emelyn here.
And then we're going to set up this corner over here as another uh, stockpiling zone, I think. We'll set that up. We'll throw in a wardrobe, because why not? No cute research. We're going to fix that. Oh, we don't want to go on expeditions, but that's an interesting little feature, is it not? So we are going to go ahead and knock out weaponsmithing, because uh, that's probably going to be a pretty important thing to have. 12 hours max. We've got some pretty smart folks living in the colony, I think, so... They're all gathering for the celebration, which is good. Hey, Emmeline, go ahead and uh, hold off on that scavenging for now. Everybody go have a good old time. So as of right now, we're sitting at about 38 food. We've got about 10 uh, health. So, I mean, we're not doing we're not doing too bad. Emmeline, or pardon me, Krista is being a party pooper. And does not want to have fun with the rest of everybody. That's alright. We don't judge. And uh, while they're sleeping, I kind of want to get a look at the rest of the landscape here. So we're in the dry season now. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but up here in the top looking at the UI so you can turn things on and off right now we can turn off where the animals are you can turn on our on and off our resource amounts you can turn on and off the resource bar survivor portraits and pretty much anything that you want to uh, do here you can do And I, what I want to do here is we're going to look at our research. And once they get that done, I'd like to get defense, power, resources, metal refinement. So after weaponsmithing, we'll probably go with uh, metal refinement and then tailoring. Excuse me. And then maybe lightning rods. Did we ever get these? Yeah, we got those checked out. Juice leaf. So we can harvest some of that. And then uh, I am going to turn back on scavenging for that. All of them is, are sleeping, which is not wise in my personal opinion. Uh, just because... In a survival situation such as this, when everybody's sleeping, nobody's paying attention. Now, not to say that there's any human raiders, but we are seeing some older crashed ships. Uh, no other signs of civilization, really? What's that? We've got some hypothermia happening. So maybe instead of uh, the metal smithing, we'll focus on trying to get our people some warmer clothes I'm not seeing any other signs of civilization but what I am worried about there's a little flying animal there that I'm struggling to click on uh, what I am definitely worried about however is my people freezing to death because it doesn't appear that the uh, it's quite windy it doesn't appear that my people have very warm clothes on some observations here and uh, that looks like a predator to me so it looks like here we have a long-tailed reptile it says relatively peaceful but looking at the body one could ascertain that this is an animal that is generally a predator uh, to other species which I would assume puts us on the menu at some point We're going to speed it up a little bit here, get them moving. They're having their breakfast in the morning, they're cold, they're a little grumpy, it is what it is. Do 
We've got Simon out here observing the animals. He is armed with a pistol, so it's pretty safe for him, I think. We've uh, learned a dromedary-esque animal. We've salvaged all that we can from our landing pod. Let's see if we have anything crazy here. We've got 20 of the juice leaf. That doesn't have anything in it. Uh, nothing super crazy there, but I mean, we got some good things out of it, I think. We've got Krista out there observing some plants. Uh, looks like we don't need to observe the rocks. We will go ahead and get these bright leafed plants observed, though. Mm. Flat-headed animal. Once again, that is a... It's by itself, which speaks to me... Oh, there's a dog. That just looks like a mastiff. I don't think that's alien in nature, to be honest. And what's cool about this is the animals wander, I just noticed. So, originally, we, uh, we noticed those bipedal animals over here. And it seems that they're moving out this way. So that animal is actually dying of thirst. I don't want to observe that one. Uh, we've got Krista coming out here to observe the dog. She is not our aggressive uh, fighter. So we can draft. Which is good to know because that means that we could uh, we could pull them out if need be. So we need to go and collect some more sticks. Which we're gonna go ahead and do here. It is a great dang. Not a great dang. Get out of here. The Great Dane is being hunted by a long-tailed reptile. Uh, Jack, do me a favor. Head out here because that dog is getting chased. Oh. My bad, Jack. What were we collecting sticks from? The palm bushes, I think. So that bloated insect there just uh, did some kind of defense move. What's going on? Insufficient storing space, hey? Not on my watch. What do we got on this dromedaries here? Manure producer drops useful waste once per day. Output depends on current happiness. Usually passive. Small a chance to retaliate when attacked. Peaceful. That's interesting. <clears throat> so I have no idea where that Great Dane booked it to. Uh, but it's important to remember that dogs are pack creatures and they are dangerous. It baffles me. Yeah, see, exactly. It's a famous dog breed, and it baffles me how it's gotten here. Interesting. That's good. Uh, sweet syrup. So it's important to click on the little things once you research them to uh, better understand what it is that they do and what they're about right off the bat instead of just exiting them out. So a Glutch, the big bloated insect, is slow and usually peaceful herbivore, which I named Glutch. So it looks like those are to be uh, hunted from a distance and not up close. So interestingly enough, what I thought was one of these uh, quadrupeds over here is a flathead. 
And it looks like they also roam around in groups. So I think what we may end up doing here, right, is uh, we might just... Is it not supposed to be outside? Raw into dried meat and hides into leather. So we're going to mark one of these for hunting and see what happens there. Everybody is uh, kind of chilling out and sleeping back at the homestead. I might have to split up their living quarters a little bit just so everybody is a little bit happier because it seems like everyone's getting woken up here. Uh, I think we need to look back into our research. Uh, we're only halfway done with what we're doing here. So Emelyn, with our uh, good old rail rifle, I believe, yeah, with our good old railgun sniper, was able to take out that animal. And it looks like we're getting the uh, the pelts and the meats and things all s squared away here. Perfect. Uh-oh, we got a little bit of indecision going on there, right? Alrighty, so let's see what we can get here, right? We can get a cook stove going. So we'll get the stove up and running. Uh, we also are going to get a workbench, work, a workbench going. Cloth, planting of cloth balsam. Alright, so there's going to be our natural uh, textile right there. It's looking like. So we'll go ahead and get some of that harvested. Just because that could help us in the long run. Quick recipes. We can do a quick meat soup. Or a quick veggie soup. Either way. Alright, so let's go into our manage here, right? Let's see. So if we go into activities, we've got some people set to cook. And it looks like Emelyn's our best bet for cooking. So, much similar to uh, good old RimWorld. It does have the same priorities, and it looks like you can click here to turn them on and off as well. We've got our hunters selected, our harvesters are out, ranchers, planters, scavengers, miners. We have one cook that's pretty decent. We'll put uh, Simon on cooking as well. We've got one good crafter. Uh, one good tailor, one good assembler, and I say good in relative sense. Uh, observers, Kristen, Jack's actually pretty good at observing as well. Research-wise, we've got our two best, Kristen and Simon, and then our haulers. So that's pretty much the same, right? We can set up our schedule here. We've got that pretty much squared away. Uh, alright. I mean, very well. We've got some expedition zones, it looks like, too. So very well on that one. Uh, we are going to have the T-Balls get harvested. Tasty recipes, quick recipes, hot drinks. We're harvesting some T-Balls, so we are going to get them uh, hard drinks until you have ten.
We are gonna set them to scavenge that. We'll tell them to harvest some juice leaf. Because you never know what could come of that. Uh, we need more sticks, so we are gonna tell them to go ahead and uh, get to trimming those palm bushes. There's a wide leaf plant, we'll observe that. Some glitter cap over there. At our workbench here, we're gonna have them create some uh, healing balm. Do six of those. That uh, sounded like somebody was shooting. I got a little, I got a little nervous. I was like, uh, uh oh, help! <laughs> We've got four days left of food. Not super worried about it. Uh, we do have some options here. do until we have eight uh, we'll do 12 that way we're at least squared away a couple days in advance we got Simon crafting some of our healing stuff going on there what can this be used to make I don't know but we're gonna harvest it We got a uh, liquid fuel from something. We made some veggie soup. That's great. Uh, do we have anybody researching at the moment? So we finished out our weapons there. We need to do tailoring. Uh, buildings can come later. And I feel like for desert storms, we kind of need to prepare a little bit. We've got some raw red meat here. We're working on that. But everyone's a little grumpy, but everyone's going to sleep. So that's all right. We're looking somewhat safe for now. No predators uh, enroaching on us at the moment. We've got more t-ball trees over there. What do these do? Those produce sweet syrup. So we are going to harvest a few of these and see what can be done with that. And then I don't think that there's... I actually want to observe the... Uh... Oh, did this get... The, something got the glutch. So we're going to butcher that. I don't know what got the glutch, but that's a little worrisome. Is there any predators down here that are chilling out? Yeah. There's some reptiles down there that are uh, hanging out down there. we got some people cooking. We've got uh, Emelyn transporting that insect meat back to us. Not sure how they'll feel about that, but we'll see. Did we already finish our research? No, we haven't started it yet. Okay. No biggie there. But yeah, folks, so far, uh, like RimWorld with better graphics. I'm really digging it. Uh... It's very nice. Uh, it kind of reminds me... There was another game that was on the Epic Game Store that was like Apocalypse themed. Also reminds me of that, but this is... Alright, so we have some aggressive animals coming in here. Uh, I was going to end it here, but we will try and uh, do this real fast. So we are going to... Set all of those to be attacked.
Uh, I need to draft all of our survivors. We're going to have them all meet out here. Uh, Krista is going to be back yonder. We're going to push our guys up here. And have them start laying into these bugs. Time to pull back. Jack's our slowest. So we're going to pull Jack right here. Simon's pretty quick. Got a little dangerous there for a second. We're going to select our three amigos, bring them back out here. Let them regroup a little bit. Set them on observe. Krista, you do whatever you were doing. We got some crack shots with us here, which is good. I am uh, not going to play the uh, waiting game with hostile creatures here. I want them to get observed. We want to harvest that meat because that'll be good for cooking. We've got these birds here. Alright, the scarabay. The bug I observed looks like an overgrown version of the pest that's known and hated on many worlds. Giving it a common bug's name felt a bit underwhelming, so I chose the nice-sounding scarabay. Unfortunately, it's a lot more annoying than some tiny insect that scuttles through your fridge. This one is a big and impudent enough to attack humans and do some damage. The main problem is that these insects tend to swarm and work together in large groups, so they should not be underestimated. So, we uh, overcame our first uh, bug attack there, as you all saw. Uh, we've got a decent amount of raw food. I wish I could see cooked food. We've got good tea. Some crafting here. Uh, I do want to make some bandages as well. Getting our research all done up here. Uh, I want to make some veggie soup as well. Just so everybody has a, a chance to uh, kind of get a little bit of relaxation from stuff. We'll go out here and collect these uh, tea balls as well. got a good shelf life. We also need to locate a couple more of these cloth bo blossoms just because that is uh, going to let us get some pretty early clothing going on here and it's pretty cold. Those railguns that we were able to salvage from our ship here are uh, pretty top-notch as far as it goes in uh, keeping us alive. 
Just kind of trying to get the, uh, the lay of the land a little bit further out while it's nighttime and our people are asleep. Uh, for the most part, it looks like we've uh, just about researched everything we can here. As far as uh, flora goes, fauna is a different matter entirely. Oh, there's some uh, cactus over there. So maybe we haven't. Some cactus and then these twisted plants and whatnot. There's a shiny rock over there. The only issue is, is you just gotta make it past the, uh, the big old creatures over here. Are they dead or alive? That's what I, I don't know if those things are alive or not. Ah. They are dead. We got leather. How's our research coming along? About halfway. We're observing a red feathered bird down there. It took off. We spooked it, unfortunately. Uh, something else that we also want to go ahead and observe is going to be these flat-headed animals. We got tailoring researched, which is great. Uh, so we are going to come into here. We're going to get a little wooden tailor bench going in our little workshop here. And then we are going to check out our research tab once again and uh, look at what we can get out of different things here. So first things first, lightning rods is only going to take about three hours. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, lightning rods then we'll hit animal taming and go from there. Right, so we want to get some uh, some jackets going. Cause I think pretty much everybody just has on t-shirts. So let's get uh let's get four jackets. Or we could do Uh, we'll do the jackets and see how it does for us. We've got Jack hitting our uh, good old crafting there. We researched lightning rods, Draca. The big flatheads are very similar to those of small Drac insects native in my home world, so I felt naming it Draca. Much to my surprise, it seems to be a peaceful herbivore. The elongated position of its eyes allows it to keep watch for predators in danger while feeding. If quartered, it can defend itself with its strong forelegs whose claw-like endings seem quite intimidating. Interesting. So next thing that I want to research, and it's going to be dangerous, are our uh, carno looking carn... was that a carnosaur? looking creatures here so I'm interested in uh, what those will actually end up being the question is is how do we observe them safely what do we got there it's another dromedary esque animal but yeah folks uh, for sure let me know what you think of this game uh, it's very interesting. I'm getting a lot of RimWorld vibes. I'm getting that game from the Epic Game Store vibes. Uh, it feels good. It looks good. I'm enjoying it.
Uh, let me know what you think, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next one.